Now, Greg, we said we had a huge announcement coming at 8.30, just after the 8.30 news, and that announcement sort of thing is that we've got uh, a lot of people in the studio with us this morning. Usually it's just Greg and I, but this this is like a party now. Yeah, it's a busy day. We have got in the uh, in the studio with us right now the mayor of Fort Hawkesbury, Billy Joe McLean. Say hi, Billy Joe. Good morning. We have got the warden of the county of Antigonish, Herb DeLore. Good morning, people. We have got the one and only, the man that has brought the Stanley Cup here today, yeah. Mr. Dennis Monty. Dennis, say hi. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. No, it's, it's a great pleasure here. to have you in here this morning. Now, Greg, you, I'm going to let you go ahead and, and lead this conversation as well, we go. Well, the, uh, the thing is, it's the Stanley Cup Day in the Quad Counties, mm -hmm. and Dennis has gratefully brought it back to his hometown uh, where he played his minor hockey in Fort Hawkesbury. And we wanted to get some people in, not only that know Dennis, like Billy Joe and Herbie know him personally, but they are the elected officials for the areas where he's bringing the cup. So we figured it best to have them in Makes and, sense. Uh, you know, share some stories about Dennis and talk about what bringing the cup home means and on Stanley Cup Day. And just before we go too much further, Stanley mm -hmm. Cup Day, not much of a ring to it. So we'll, we'll have to come up with something a little bit later for that, to replace that. A little bit later. Yeah. All right. So who do we start with? Do we start with Billy Joe or do we start with Herb? Which one do we start with? Right? Start with Herb. Start no? With Herb. Herb, Herb saying Billy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Herb. Don't be shy, guys. Two politicians that don't want to talk. Well, I've never heard that, that before. Between them, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, why don't we start with Herbie? Uh, you know Dennis personally. Uh, you watched him grow up, right? Uh, certainly, and uh, I. This is Dennis Bonvie Day, and I, I, I can't say enough good things. I uh, really appreciate Dennis bringing the cup back to uh, his roots, where he's, he uh, was born and raised, and played his minor hockey, and played. His, started out in. in uh, Great contribution to amateur sports uh, right across the county of Antigonish and uh, in the Strait region. Uh, I uh, probably am one of the most fortunate people uh, in the studio this morning because uh, I uh, certainly uh, grew up with his dad, Kevin, and uh, and his mom, and uh, Katie, and uh, they had excellent tutors. Uh, you know, uh, going back to the grandparents, I, I remember. Uh, uh, Kathleen and Herbie uh, being so supportive of, uh, of uh, minor uh, hockey and ball and sports in general in Antigua Nation and surrounding areas. Now, uh, we mentioned earlier, well, earlier today, last couple days really, this is the first time in, as far as we can remember, 21 years that the Cup has been in this area east of Antigua Nation when Al McGinnis brought it home in 89. So what's the, what's the feeling, what's the buzz in the county for, uh, for this day? People are so excited at the fact that one of our own boys has had the opportunity to bring back the cup to the eastern part of the province of Nova Scotia, and in more particular, Antigonish and Strait Region. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment. Uh, I, uh, like I say I can't say enough good things, and uh, I know Dennis from a uh, little toddler when Dennis was uh, actually a baby. I, I can go back uh, over uh, a long time, and Dennis accomplished what every uh, every youth in, uh, in in Nova Scotia, probably Canada, and in, in the world could have possibly done, and when they lace up a pair of skates, their wishes would be able to someday play in NHL, and Dennis done that. Now, uh, Dennis is one of the most recognized enforcers in professional hockey. It's well known he has the most career penalty minutes in professional hockey. You say you knew him since he was a baby. You must have a story that would embarrass this tough guy a little bit for us, right? Oh, not at all. I certainly wouldn't want to embarrass. Them. Do it! Do it! Do it! <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I know they're out there. They're all over there. <laughs> just a matter of finding someone willing to share them. I, I'll uh, I'll just shift strings just for a second. And right. I, um, we were playing in the provincials, playing ball, and uh, Dennis blew a sneaker on me. I was the coach, and he blew a sneaker. But uh, he was getting a raw, raw deal, and it was rightly so. And uh, it was not all his fault. Uh, mind you, probably was some of my fault too. But Anyway, uh, that, that was quite a day. Now, Dennis is here. Dennis, uh, how are you feeling? Like, today is the day. Today is the day that you bring the cup home. We, we've had you on the radio uh, through through commercials that you're, you're excited about bringing the cup home. How do you feel today now? Yeah, it's actually kind of surreal. Uh, you know, you, you, I always had that dream in the back of my head. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't really even tell my dad until I was there. I, I always wanted to play in the National Hockey League. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I ever could. You know, you, sometimes you doubt yourself, but you kind of got to kick yourself and get your back to reality and say, you know what, I'm going to keep trying and keep pursuing. And, and, and Herb's right. Thank God you got good parents that support you and say, you know what, give it another effort and keep trying. And that's what I did. 
Uh, you, you can't stay down when you get kind of knocked down. You got to get back up and keep fighting and, and maybe take an alternative route. And that's what I did. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to have supporting parents and support uh, support cast around you and a wife. And I got kids that have supported everything I've done. Um, and uh, like I said, you, sometimes you take a little bit of a different route. But uh, you know, I, I just that's what I always wanted to do. And and, and somehow I was going to uh, try to accomplish that. And at the end of the day, if I didn't accomplish that, I could look in the mirror and be pretty happy with myself and what that I give it my best effort. And, uh, you know, I remember my dad, mom and dad telling me, listen, you don't have to go to work this summer because I'm, we're going to support you one more year. You want to try to do this, then and, uh, go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, that pretty lucky to be able to do that. I, you know, you know, they were going to kind of help me out financially, keep me going and say, give it one more effort. And I did that. Uh, and, I, you know, I just really had opportunities to come home, but I didn't want to do that. You know, um, I just wanted to keep uh, pursuing my dream. And, uh, you know, uh, and when you do that, it doesn't matter whatever business you're in. Uh, you know, it's fortunate being a hockey business. You got to get some breaks along the way. And believe me, there's some people out there that give me some breaks and an opportunity, and that's what you need. And it's the same that happened after hockey. You know, there's people that give you that breaks, and you know, I always mention them because he deserved to be mentioned. A guy like Al McIsaac in Chicago gave me a break and mm -hmm. brought my name into a, you know, a meeting and really pushed me and urged me, you know, and urged the people around him to, to hire me. And, and you know, that's a big reason why I'm here too. Now, now, Dad is here today in the corner. How how you feeling, Dad? You feel, oh, right? I feel great. You feel great? Oh yeah. Feel come on great. into the microphone, Pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come on, on in. Come on up. Just for just for a quick second. Sure. How uh, you know this this day is a big part of you too, as Dennis mentioned. How proud are you watching him? You know, get his day with the cup. Oh, very proud. Very proud because I knew right from uh, when Dennis was a young fellow, he had determination of the devil. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> something was good for the cup. A lot of it, you know. So I'm very proud. Very proud. Yeah, he comes by it honestly, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, 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 we moved to Billy Joe McLean, who, who is never a, a man who doesn't have words to say. Billy Joe, I, I give you the open microphone now. This gentleman here stands in front of you, Dennis Bombi. What, what do you feel about Dennis today? Well, it took, it took me a long time to like the, the Dennis. What? Okay, tell us that story now. Hold on a second. Well, he played for the Bulldogs, you know. Oh, okay, all right. And in that year, he beat up a lot of our players. And I always sat behind the penalty box and I'd have to wait for his father to leave the rink so he wouldn't beat me up. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be hauling to Dennis. <laughs> but uh, in all reality, uh, Dennis, uh, he played minor league hockey here, he played one year junior and he moved on but he's, he was well respected in the league. He watched his father get a lot of penalties too, you know. His father played senior hockey mm -hmm. and he was a big man, very strong, worked at the pump mill, had a lot of friends. So he packed the rink for the senior hockey. And then Dennis, of course, sitting there watching him, said, you know, i got to be an enforcer in the NHL. And from there, that lifted his spirits. So the, the fact that he's honored us to come here with the Stanley Cup, I think is a great day. And I know Bob McCracken wouldn't mind if I did this. If any of you people are listening or down in Pennsylvania, you want a pizza, he's got a restaurant. He's got a burger restaurant. He's got a pizza restaurant. He's got a gourmet restaurant. This is a free ad on behalf of Bob McCracken. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to wish him Merry Christmas. Everybody in Pennsylvania, if you're listening, go to these restaurants. I wish they'd come and drove and start eating it. That's the problem. They're not coming there, so they're going to maybe drive 16 hours to eat it there. <laughs> no, thanks for going. Congratulations. Thank you for coming to the community. Yeah, Billy Joe, let me ask you the same thing I asked Herbie. Uh, you know, what's what's the buzz in town? What are what are people saying to you? They must be excited, right? Well, it I just happen every uh, day. I just came from Tim Hortons picking up my daily dose of gossip, <laughs> and there's excitement in the air, even with the staff. They're saying this is going to be a busy day. There's going to be a lot of sales, and a lot of kids are going to be around, and the schools are all hyped up. So we're expecting a big crowd at the Civic Center, and I know Herbie expects a great big crowd on the other side of the water. So I think it's a wonderful day, and the 21 years is true that people haven't, that this cup has never been here that I can remember. So, and I'm an old fellow now, I've been around for a long time, so we're very grateful that Dennis arranged for it to come here, and uh, it's going to be a memorable day, and we're going to be very excited, and we have some things that we'd like to do at that time, so. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk more with Herbie and, and uh, Billy Joe McLean and Dennis Bonvey, all part of the uh, Stanley Cup being in the straight area today. Here take 47. We're talking uh, 101.5, the Blackhawk today with the Stanley Cup. Uh, well, winner Dennis Bonvey is here today. Dennis was just telling us a story while we were in the commercials there, and, and I stopped him. I said, Dennis, wait, hold on. Tell the rest of that story. Can you start from the beginning again? It, it, was, a, it was a Bulldogs fighting story. Well, I just, uh, you know, you start 
midget and then you, you get a year of junior and you know you're all gung ho to getting a few scraps. Luckily I did well on my first few to keep me going. I'm sure if I had a you know got knocked on my keister a couple of times I, w I wouldn't have been doing what I you know I did my whole career. But I uh, ended up walking into the rink. I was only 17. I was playing against the older guys, 20 years. And they were saying, no, this Tommy Hickey has never been beaten in three years. It's the toughest guy in the league. I said, well, I'll try him tonight, you know. And they looked at me. It was just, what are you talking about? You know? So I ended up doing that. I did really well. It was, it was a good, good scrap. He's one of the toughest guys I fought. Mm -hmm. He really was when it's all said and done. And then a week later, we were playing him in a series, and I ended up, he came at me again. He said, you want to do this kid? And so I ended up scrapping right in front of my dad. And the rink was packed. It was probably 3,500 people in any mm -hmm. extra 3,000. It was packed. And it was a good one. It was a long one, back and forth. and went back and forth. But you get kicked out of the game. So uh, as soon as you fight, you're gone. And he was gone. I was gone. And the fans loved it. I went up and I sat in the stands. But I had a, like, a bloody nose a little bit, you know. And I took one right in the beak. And I sat beside Dad. We were watching the game. I said, how did I do it? I said, how oh, you screw me. Man, that, that things things are a little blurry right now. My ghost. He <laughs> said, just just concentrate in the game. You'll be all right. They'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Kevin. Good job, Kevin. Kevin broke out the smelling salts. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say nothing. Those will go away. Period. <laughs> not the end of it. <laughs> so, uh, Dennis, let's skip ahead to, to pro hockey. You talked about one of your memorable junior fights, but uh, in terms of pro hockey, who are some of the the names that you, people would recognize that you dropped the gloves with, and how did you do? Ah. Uh, I, I always did pretty well. I was a little bit undersized. You see a lot of guys now. I'm, you know, they're six three, six four, um, and uh, it's hard to every team had two or three guys. And so it's hard to really go out and say because, you know, any guy could have your number on any given day. I'd like to have a couple back. I'm sure you'd, if you'd watch them, you'd, you'd say, oh God, I should be better against that guy. But mm -hmm. you'd like to have them back. It's, it's just you let your guard down, but. I fought Ty Domi, I fought, uh, God rest his soul, one of my favorites, Bob Probert, who's uh, was just a, a great guy, but he was just a better dad, you know, he's a great, great person. I actually was reading the book, my wife called me the other day, she got the book for me, she said, like, didn't, and she's reading the line, because I remember telling my dad I was going to, you know, if he was in playing in an exhibition, he's in Chicago, I was in Edmonton, I was going to try to scrap him, and I went up to him in warm-up, and or in on the draw, said, you're going to make me or break me, which was true. He's either going to, I'm going to do good and I'll make a name or you'll mm -hmm. never see me again. I'll be gone. You know, they'll send me down. And in the book, he had mentioned another guy and said it right after. So it was kind of ironic that he said, you know, he mentioned me as a tough kid and did all this stuff. And then he mentioned Scott Parker said it. So it was a little bit of a, you know, I guess an oops in, in, in the writing of the story. But it, it was, it's a good book. It's a real good book. And I ended up playing with him. So he was probably one of the tougher guys. You can go on and on. There's a lot of guys that... You know, George the Rock and Stu Grimson and Donald Rush. There's all kinds of guys out there. Uh, and, you know, I was fortunate enough that, you know, I hung in there against most of them. Were you around for some of the newer guys like uh, Colt Noor, Derek Bougard, those, yeah. those guys? Yeah, no, I never fought Bougard, but no. uh, Colt Noor, I, a bunch. That's yeah. probably good. Bougard's a big guy. Yeah. Not that I underestimate your ability, but <laughs> Bougard is a big guy. Don't call him a man man for some. <laughs> Just got to think him. One of, uh, one of your fights ended up in Coach's Corner, did it not? Yeah, I had a couple. Yeah. couple in uh, Don, Don Cherry brought you. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of them with Probert, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. That was That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. He called me the Frankville Flash, but I don't think he saw me skate. I, <laughs> I, I was referring to the fists, I yeah, think. I think so. <laughs> well, uh, Herbie, uh, you mentioned when we were in commercial as well about, uh, you know, what, what it means to have an ambassador like Dennis when you and Mary McLean go to different parts of the country and... Uh, representing the province, what people say to you about, uh, about this, this guy? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, Billy Joel and myself uh, have been involved in Minnesota politics for a number of years. I've uh, met people from, from the west coast to the east coast, uh, right across this great Canadian country. And uh, the first thing they will ask us is, uh, oh, where are you from? Well, uh, in my case, you know, well, I'm from Antigonish, Nova Scotia. Um, you wouldn't happen to know a guy by the name of Dennis Bunby, would you? And I would say uh, yes. Matter of fact, uh, his dad and I grew up within uh, throwing distance of Iraq, and uh, I knew Dennis uh, since he's been a toddler. And uh, they would say, well, every time we know he's in town, we will certainly make a great effort, concentrated effort, to beat the arena to watch him. He uh, packs the house. He's a uh, he's a great. Uh, Ambassador, not only for 
our neck of the woods, but certainly for any condition surrounding areas. Right, Jimmy the Janitor's got your morning laugh, and then we've got uh, a big finale coming up before 9 of the gift of Christmas here on the hot. 854, complete information update on the way with Greg Morrow right here at <coughs> 9 o'clock. It's a big morning. It is 101.5 the Blackhawk today because the Chicago Blackhawks scout uh, Dennis Bonvi is here right now. He is, uh, he is in possession or will be in possession of the Stanley Cup later on this afternoon uh, across the street area. Should we run down the day one more time before before we get to the yeah, big thing? Yeah, sure. Why not? So uh, the first stop for the Cup is 1.30 at East Antigonish Education Center and Academy in Monastery, 1.30 to 2.15. Just a reminder, that event is not open for the public, it's just for students and staff. Uh, the Cup will be coming across the causeway and there'll be a, a motorcade to bring it in into Port Hawkesbury about 3 o'clock at the tourist bureau, some fire trucks, police cars, stuff like that, and, and Dennis and the Cup, of course. Uh, Dennis will come back to talk to us a bit to see how the day's going at about uh, 3.15, we'll have him on. And he'll be at the Big Tim's on Reef Street uh, in Port Hawkesbury from 3.30 to 4. Uh, 4 o'clock, the plan is to have Dennis walk across Reef Street into the Civic Center with the Cup. That's going to be a, a, great, uh, a great scene. 4 to 6 at the Civic Center, and then from there uh, back toward Harbor Bushy, and there'll be another sort of motorcade from Alls Cove into Harbor Bushy, 7 to 9 at the Harbor Bushy Community Center. And we've been saying all along these times are tentative because, you know, a few minutes here and there certainly throws you off a bit, so just try and understand that uh, we're dealing with a big day and trying to, trying to accommodate a lot of people. Now, uh, I guess the last thing I have for Dennis, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge day. We're, we're hours away. Um, the Stanley Cup is probably in the air right now on its way to Halifax. Y you lived one dream when you hoisted it over your shoulders, but this is, this is something that the kids think about too when, when they're playing hockey is, you know, bringing it back to their hometown. What's, what's your feeling right now when we're just a few hours away? Well, I consider myself it's an honor. I'm fortunate to be, you know, to, to be able to put you know, be in this position. Um, uh, I always consider myself fortunate to play one professional game, let alone to play f in 15 years and over 1,000 games pro, and you know, some in the NHL and some in the minor leagues. But uh, to be able to still be in the game and get an opportunity to work for the best organization in the world, uh, to win the Stanley Cup, you know, you got to pinch yourself sometime. But at the end of the day, to be able to bring that all home to people that maybe would never get to see it or get to be a part of it and see them smiling and. Uh, uh, you know, share some time with it and get a picture with it because, you know, hockey is uh, everything in Canada. So it's, uh, I consider myself very, very fortunate at the end of the day to be able to do that for everybody. Sure. Now okay. we've been calling this Stanley yeah. Cup Day. We've been saying Stanley Cup Day doesn't quite have the right ring to it. So we wanted to make something a little more official. And that's part of the reason we brought in Herbie and Billy Joe. Um, not just to share stories, but they are elected officials, so we have to make sure they're earning their money. Um, and they have a little bit of a proclamation to make here. Uh, gentlemen, go ahead. Great, thanks, Greg. Uh, we certainly want to uh, present this block to, uh, to Dennis, uh, Mayor McLean, and myself uh, for the contribution you have made. So this is what the block says. Uh, in recognition of Dennis Bonvey's role with the 2010 Stanley Cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks, and Dennis bringing the cup home, the warden of the municipality of the county of Anakinish, and the mayor of the town of when Oxbury have declared December 9, 2010, Dennis Bonvey Day in the Quad Counties. Thank you again. Thanks a lot, guys. That's, uh, that's a real honor. Thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. So as I said to Greg this morning, I came in and I said, Happy Dennis Bonvey Day. <laughs> Greg said, Happy Denny, Dennis Bonvey Day. Yeah. Not yet, though. Now it's official. No, now it's official. You can officially say that it's Dennis Bonvey Day in the Quad Counties. Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor. I never expect anything like this. I just, all I expect and I want is people to smile and enjoy the day with the cup. And, and uh, you know, that makes me smile and everybody involved. So to have uh, extra attributes and stuff going on, it's, uh, it's, it's a real honor. Thank you very, very much. And uh, believe me, it's a real pleasure to be a part of it. And uh, just a couple quick thank yous before we're yep. done. Uh, thanks, Herbie and Billy Joe, for coming in and doing this. Uh, Maple Signs and Engraving for providing the plaque. And, of course, uh, Dennis. It's uh, this day is all about him and the Stanley Cup, and he's uh, got a bit of a busy day ahead. So we certainly appreciate him coming in and taking some time out of that busy day. Thanks, Dennis.